Hello everyone and welcome to Unique Fact, the channel where we explore the fascinating world of wildlife. In today's video, we are going to talk about the lost species of South America. These are animals that once roamed this continent, but are now extinct due to various reasons. By learning about these animals, we can gain a better understanding of the past and the present of life on Earth, and also appreciate the importance of conservation. South America is a vast and diverse continent, with a rich and complex history. It is home to many unique and endemic species, such as the jaguar, the llama, the anaconda, and the hummingbird. However, South America also has a long list of animals that have disappeared from its lands, either recently or in the distant past. These animals are known as the lost species, and they represent a part of the natural heritage that has gone forever. There are many causes of extinction, but some of the most common ones are human activities, climate change, and invasive species. Human activities, such as hunting, deforestation, agriculture, and urbanization, have reduced the habitat and resources of many animals, and also increased their exposure to diseases and predators. Climate change, such as the Ice Age and the Holocene, has altered the temperature and precipitation patterns of the continent, affecting the survival and adaptation of many animals. Invasive species, such as dogs, cats, rats, and horses, have introduced new competitors and predators to the native fauna, and also transmitted diseases and parasites. In this video, we are going to focus on five extinct animals that lived in South America, and learn more about their appearance, behavior, ecology, and extinction. These animals are, the dire wolf, a large carnivore that hunted in packs, the dodecurus, a giant armadillo-like mammal that had a club-like tail, the macrochenia, a camel-like mammal that had a trunk-like nose, the giant ground sloth, a huge sloth that fed on leaves and branches. The nodiomastodon, a mastodon that grazed on grasses and sedges. Five amazing animals that went extinct in South America. Let's start with the dire wolf. The dire wolf, or Enoceon dirus, was a large carnivore that lived in North and Western South America until about 7000 BCE. It was similar to modern wolves, but had a heavier build and stronger jaws. It was about 1.5 meters long and weighed up to 80 kilogram. It had a thick fur, a long tail, and a black or brown coloration. The dire wolf hunted in packs of up to 30 individuals, and preyed on large herbivores like horses, camels, and ground sloths. It used its powerful bite to crush the bones of its prey, and could also scavenge on carcasses. It was a social and territorial animal, and communicated with howls, barks, and growls. The dire wolf went extinct due to competition with other predators, such as the saber-toothed cat, the cougar, and the jaguar, and also due to loss of prey, as many of its preferred food sources also became extinct. The dire wolf was one of the most successful and widespread predators of the Pleistocene, and its fossils have been found in many locations across the continent. Next, we have the Dodocurus. The Dodocurus, or Dodocurus clavicaudatus, was a giant armadillo-like mammal that lived in the South American Pampas until about 4500 BCE. It was about 4 meters long and weighed up to 2 tons. It had a thick armor of bony plates that covered its body, and a long, club-like tail that could be used as a weapon or a defense. It had a small head, a short neck, and a low-slung body. The Dodocurus was a herbivore that fed on grasses and roots. It used its strong claws to dig up the soil and find food, and also to create burrows where it could rest and hide. It was a solitary and nocturnal animal, and avoided predators by its size and armor. It was also able to swing its tail with great force, and could inflict serious injuries to its enemies. The Dodocurus went extinct due to hunting by humans and climate change. As the climate became drier and colder, the grasslands that the Dodocurus depended on became scarce, and it had to compete with other herbivores, such as the llama and the guanaco, for food. The Dodocurus was also hunted by humans for its meat and armor, and its bones have been found in many archaeological sites. 
Moving on, we have the Macrochenia. The Macrochenia, or Macrochenia patachonica, was a camel-like mammal that lived in southwestern South America until about 9000 BCE. It was about 3 meters long and weighed up to 500 kg. It had a long neck, a trunk-like nose, and three-toed feet. It had a thin fur, a long tail, and a brown or gray coloration. The Macrochenia was a herbivore that browsed on leaves and fruits. It used its flexible nose to reach high branches and to smell the air for predators and food. It was a fast and agile animal, and could run up to 40 kilometers per hour. It was a social and migratory animal, and traveled in herds of up to 50 individuals. The Macrochenia went extinct due to habitat loss and predation. As the climate became warmer and wetter, the forests that the Macrochenia inhabited became reduced, and it had to compete with other browsers, such as the deer and the tapir, for food. The Macrochenia was also preyed upon by predators, such as the saber-toothed cat, the cougar, and the dire wolf, and had few defenses against them. Next up, we have the giant ground sloth. The giant ground sloth, or Megatherium americanum, was a huge sloth that lived in temperate South America and the Andes until about 5000 BCE. It was about 6 meters long and weighed up to 4 tons. It had long claws, a thick fur, and a powerful tail. It had a large head, a short neck, and a robust body. The giant ground sloth was a herbivore that fed on leaves and branches. It used its claws to pull down trees and to strip off the bark and foliage. It was a slow and clumsy animal, and could only move at a speed of 5 kilometers per hour. It was a solitary and diurnal animal, and spent most of its time resting and sleeping. The giant ground sloth went extinct due to hunting by humans and environmental changes. As the climate became cooler and drier, the vegetation that the giant ground sloth relied on became scarce, and it had to travel longer distances to find food. The giant ground sloth was also hunted by humans for its meat and fur, and its bones have been found in many caves and rock shelters. Finally, we have the Nodiomastodon. The Nodiomastodon, or Nodiomastodon platensis, was a mastodon that lived in South America until about 4000 BCE. It was about 2.5 meters tall and weighed up to 3 tons. It had long tusks, a trunk, and four-toed feet. It had a thick fur, a short tail, and a brown or black coloration. The Nodiomastodon was a herbivore that grazed on grasses and sedges. It used its tusks to dig up the ground and to fight with other males. It used its trunk to pick up food and to drink water. It was a slow and heavy animal, and could only move at a speed of 15 kilometers per hour. It was a social and gregarious animal, and lived in groups of up to 20 individuals. The Nodiomastodon went extinct due to hunting by humans in competition with other herbivores. As the climate became warmer and wetter, the grasslands that the Nodiomastodon inhabited became replaced by forests and swamps, and it had to compete with other grazers, such as the llama, the guanaco, and the horse, for food. The Nodiomastodon was also hunted by humans for its meat and ivory, and its bones have been found in many riverbanks and lakeshores. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed learning about the lost species of South America, and how they lived and died. These animals are a reminder of the amazing diversity and complexity of life on Earth, and also of the fragility and vulnerability of nature. By studying these animals, we can appreciate the beauty and value of the living world, and also the responsibility and duty of protecting and preserving it. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.